Assalamualaikum and hello. My name is Nurul Atikah binti Nurul Akmal. And Assalamualaikum and hi. My name is Norfana Akila Minti Azri. So today we're gonna present about South Asia regions, which is defined in geographical and also ecocultural terms. The picture showing right now is the map of the regions and also the regions located in the world map. So what is South Asia? South Asia is consists of the land from the Himalayan peaks to the Indian Oceans, the part of Asia often referred as the Indian subcontinent. The region is home to the 1.5 billion people and a total that may rise to nearly 2 billion in 2025, more than any other world regions. And yet, South Asia is the smallest world region. Physically, the region is hemmed in by the northern mountain wall, but internally, it is dominated by the great plains of the Indus, Changes, and also Brahmaputra rivers. Next is climate changes in South Asia. So the highland part you can find in northern India, Nepal, and Bhutan, and then the second one is desert you can find in western India and southern Pakistan and the last one is tropical wet which you can find in southern India, southern Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. Next is the environmental problem which there are two types of it. Um, the first one is the natural hazard and the second one is human induced environmental problem. And the natural hazard it consists of earthquake, flooding, drought, global warming and tsunami. And for the human induced environmental problem is air pollution and water pollution. So the first natural hazard is earthquake. It, um, the earthquake begin to set in because of the glacial plates that produce the Himalayas. The second natural hazard is flooding. It is a major problem in Ganges and Brahmaputra Valley, especially it combined with the Delta. It affected a lot of people who live over there. The third natural hazard is drought. Water supply is a critical thing which it is very important in every country. So the scarcity of water presents a big social problem towards the India society no matter um, in urban areas or rural areas. The fourth natural hazard is global warming. So as global warming um, continues in the future, it will give an effect to the Maldives and much of the Ganges Brahmaputra Valley as the few feet above sea level face drowning by the rising um, ocean level. And the last natural hazard is tsunami. So there are massive earthquakes of northern Sumatra in Indonesia which generate tsunami at the southeastern India and Sri Lanka. So this affected um, a fisherman and the tourists, uh, the people who are in the tourist industry. Next, moving on to the human in this environmental problem and the first one is air pollution. So making herbicides and pesticides are used in the Green Revolution. So in 1984, at the Union Carbide um, pesticide plant in Bhopal, India, there are a water leak into a metal isocyanate which triggered a chemical reaction and caused a really toxic gas which affected a lot of people um, in the area. And the last one is water pollution. So about 40% of India's population live at the Ganges River Basin and there are a lot of factories at the urban area. So the population are reaches the Ganges River because of the concentration um, of leather panning operation and the quality of water has decreased because of that. Next, I'm going to explain about the history and culture of the South Asian. The first one is pre-colonial culture. So it is believed that Dravidian people of Southern India um, are the modern descendants um, of some um, region's oldest inhabitants. They probably found, um, found the irrigation farming system in the Indus Valley by 3000 before Christ. Next is Hindus and caste. So lighter skin and taller Indo-Aryan people um, reach to the northwestern uh, passes by 1500 before Christ. So as a result of Indo-Aryan people uh, influences, so Hindus crystallized in 1200 before Christ in the Indus River Valley. So the Aryan uh, people also brought uh, together the traditional myth and um, the gods to form the Hinduism based on the Sanskrit Veda. This is Buddhism and Jainism, so in relation to aspects um, of the Hinduism. So Buddhism and Jainism were um, established uh, in the Ganges River Valley in the 500s before Christ. So uh, when the Mauryan Empire grew to include um, the, all the Indian subcontinents, so the, its most celebrated ruler Asoka uh, embraced the Buddhism and propagated the drama policy which um, a code of conduct based on the social responsibility, human dignity and socio-religious peace. So Jainism um, follow a non-violent code where Mahama Gandhi embraced it um, in his fight for Indian independence from the British 
Jane's um, has become a really exclusive community as they have profited um, from farming and killing worms and insects. Next is many invention. So invention kept historical Indian communities in a state of flux, so particularly in the northern plain where a mosaic of distinctive um, people, environment and anarchic uh, governments resulted. Next is Muslim, Mughal and Singh. So after Muslim invaded the north in 1100s, they pushed uh, southward from the Indus and Ganges plain. So um, it was not until 1500s um, that the Mughal or Mughal dynasty extended Muslim belief um, to the rest of the region. In the early um, 1500s, Sikhism arose as one of the several um, reactions of Hinduism um, in the Mughal dynasty in the Punjab. So it was founded in the late 1500s by the Guru Arjan Singh, uh, which he included the, the Singh scripture that he has collected. Next is Manda isolation and island openness. So tribes in Himalaya have found their own way to live, but Tibet was sometimes um, invaded by Nepal and Bhutan. But Afghanistan has been a sanctuary um, in the mountains for the many ethnic groups and the closeness of Ceylon which is known as Sri Lanka nowadays um, to India and its openness um, to ocean-borne commerce um, and conquest attracted competing parties. Move on to the colonial impacts. The first one is trading expansion. So since the region have a really great wealth, um, it is a goal for European adventures in the face of merchantile um, expansion um, in the mid 1400s. Next is East India Company. So in the 1600, the Dutch forced the East India Company uh, out, out of the East Indies and the British moved from the most trading center to India, ousting their um, rival, which is the Portuguese and Dutch. So in 1700s, um, in the Mughal Empire, so the political instability caused by the internal faction um, split the South Asia into small and white kingdom. But mostly are dominated by the Muslim and the Hindu leaders, which um, style themselves as a Maharaja or Prince. And the last one is British Indian Empire, which is known as British Raj. So the British East India Company was abolished by the British and um, they established the British Indian Empire. So 40% of the region uh, was under independence, princely family governments who order matters harmony um, with the British policies. So, um, the British saw mutual beneficial which um, they see them as a role to, to civilize the India by producing raw materials um, for the British industry. And to the path to independence, so during the um, in late um, 1800s, the extension of British rule created an awareness across the subcontinent of an evolving um, national identity. So, in 1885, a combination of cultural history and a personal ident uh, interest led to the founding of India Congress Party um, by mainly Hindu elite. So, aim of inclusive India, in which Hindus um, were the majority but coexisted with uh, Muslim, Singh, um, Jainism, Buddhism, Christian, Jews, and many more. I want to explain to the um, current issue of the South Asia. The first one is Indian farmers to extend um, their protest after rejecting uh, the court proposal. Um, in the New Delhi, tens of thousands of farmers will continue to protest against India's new farm law, which they fear the law will lead to the uh, co to the corporate control over um, the agriculture production, processing, and uh, market lower crop prices by removing the government purchases. The last current issue is India's army shift. Um, we expect that China will solve the Himalayas borders. Um, crisis, which India's army chief expected that um, the talks uh, with China will lead to an amicable solution to the Himalayan uh, border crisis, which there is a fight in, uh, where 20 soldier, 20 Indian soldiers were killed last year. Next, let me introduce to you to the South Asia sub-regions. South Asia contains three sub-regions, which is firstly is the Republic of India, which is the world's largest country in total populations. Next is the Bangladesh and Pakistan, the two countries Muslims in the regions. And lastly, the mountain and the island rim. Let's we move to the economic activities of the sub-region. Being the world's largest country in total populations, India indeed have various and a lot of economic activities, which is first traditional farming. In India, they use cows that are kept for it meals and also they are making ghee, which is a liquid butter. Next is the mining, where India rock 
contain other metals ore such as copper, gold and also manganese. Textile manufacturing is also one of the economic activities. As example, I've taken Arvind LTD which is one of the top denim manufacturers in India. Next, high-tech industry where Bangalore become India first electronic city. And next also Mumbai, the center of manufacturing and movies where, whereby almost 500 to 600 titles or more was produced annually in Mumbai. And lastly, the service sector. As a tourism example, Yatra Company is an Indian online travel agency and also they have travel search engines. Second sub region, which is Pakistan and Bangladesh, have three economic activities. Firstly, is manufacturing and service industry. Textile manufacturing, especially cotton goods, has dominated the industries that include food processing, chemical and also car assembly. Second is the mining and forestry. Both Bangladesh and Pakistan indeed have a reserve of oil and also natural gas. In addition, Pakistan important chemical industry is built on the deposits of gypsum, rock salt and also soda ash. The third economic activity is the Grameen Bank, where Bangladesh had developed a concept of microcredit, which means that individuals or group can make a small loans to open a business. It is have been recognized by as a successful program that being copied by fifty eight countries. Lastly, is the economic activities of sub-regions, mountain and island rim that contain five countries, which name Afghanistan. Maldives, Nepal, Sri Lanka, and also Bhutan. First economic activities is the agriculture basis. Sri Lanka with its tea, rubber, and coconut. Meanwhile, Maldives with its coconut have commercial plantation that sell cash tops to the world market. Secondly is the mines, forests, and also fisheries. Several countries of these sub-regions are producing gemstones. Besides, in fisheries activities, Maldives hold a very importance on it as tuna accounts for 60% of the country export. Next, activity is a small manufacturing. Nepal and Bhutan have encouraged an external investment in them for the hydroelectricity and also other function. Last but not least is a tourism. Maldives is known as one of the world's most geographical dispersed con countries. And in addition, for Nepal, tourism is the largest industry and foreign exchange earner. It has attracted an average half a million each year before the pandemic comes. That's all from us. Thank you.